Hello and welcome back to another video in which we are going to be talking about the Arch Linux installation process and we are continuing our deep dive with the bootloader part. And so this is the part when I tell you that when you are installing your own Arch Linux operating system, be it in a virtual machine or on a regular computer, you should always follow the official installation guide on the Arch Linux homepage on the Arch Wiki and this video is not supposed to be kind of a replacement to the Arch Wiki. It is uh, just me trying to explain what is exactly going on during the installation process. And so today's episode is about installing the bootloader and as you can see this is kind of the last section of this uh, installation guide but don't worry this is not the end of this video series and if you want to be uh, notified when the new episodes come up you should subscribe to this channel and continue my journey into understanding the Arch Linux installation process and the basic setup process. Okay so now that's out of the way so let's uh, go and let's uh, discuss the bootloader installation and its implications on Arch Linux. So the uh, installation process we have already installed all the packages we wanted and we are in this Cheroot environment when we are setting up the basic things about our operating system and basically everything is ready to go except for one thing when you turn on your computer it won't just uh, load this operating system without a bootloader being present so that's why we need to install the bootloader so in the boot process basically the firmware which is uh, like the BIOS in the old computers and the EFI uh, firmware in the new computers this firmware needs to give the, the control to the operating system but how can it do it well what it does is it just basically gives the control to a boot manager which uh, can present a menu to the user and the user can select from the different boot options and then this bootloader will load the kernel into the memory and once the kernel is in the memory the kernel can start to take over and start to run your computer. The EFI firmware usually provides its own bootloader and it can load a properly formatted kernel image but it's usually very tedious and it is, its implementation varies greatly between the different um, uh, manufacturers. And so if you want to know more about uh, the bootloaders and boot managers, I can suggest you to come to this page which is like managing EFI bootloaders for Linux basic principles by Rod Smith. I think it's a good read about EFI and booting on EFI. And if you are more just interested in the Arch Linux related content on this uh, topic, there is a Arch wiki page which is called the Arch boot process and that will give you a quite good overview actually how the boot process works in Arch Linux and it gives us a feature comparison on the available bootloaders and boot managers on the Arch Linux operating system and you can see that Grub is basically the big legacy well it's not really legacy it's like the like the old and uh, robust and well well-known uh, bootloader and uh, well kind of systemd boot is this uh, newer thing that is not as uh, broad in applications but it's a very good kind of uh, boot manager it is uh, good for our purposes usually and uh, well in my main computer I use grub but I wanted to learn something new and I wanted to learn something modern so in this episode we are going to be installing systemd boot because systemd boot is basically part of the systemd package you do not need to install any additional package for this to work and it has a good integration with other systemd tools for example you can 
tell systemd to reboot in the specific boot option so you don't have to reboot and uh, select the menu point but you can just uh, tell the system uh, while it's booted already how to do it and so we will be installing uh, systemd boot onto our boot uh, boot partition basically because uh, well even though it, the systemd boot is part of the system the uh, package we need to uh, make the the binaries available on the boot partition which is not done automatically so what we have to remember from this page is that systemd boot is not available if you are using a system with a bios you need to use uefi so if you are using a virtual machine be uh, or make sure that you start the virtual machine in uefi mode and similarly if you are using a computer which uh, lets you switch between legacy bios and uefi mode then for this you need the uefi mode to be on and so if you are following this uh, installation guide or not like this installation video series and you haven't done anything since the last video your computer was on and you just clicked on this video and you started then you don't have anything else to do but if since the last video you turned off your virtual machine or turned off your computer and now you are going back to it to do the boot loader installation then what you need to do is you need to mount your uh, file systems the slash mnt and slash mnt boot the proper partitions should be mounted at these mount positions or mount directories and you need to arch dash to root into slash mnt and so first we need to make sure that we are in the efi mode and what we can just list the efi variables from uh, slash sys slash firmware slash uh, efi slash efi wars and you can see that there are a lot of efi variables here which means that we are in efi mode and well it is actually very simple to install this uh, system deboot we just give the bootctl install command there are some other options so if you are like customizing your system like crazy you can have like a separate uh, efi partition and a separate boot partition and you can use the dash dash esp dash path and the dash dash boot path uh, basically options to install your uh, systemd boot while taking care of these different directories for the efi and the boot uh, partitions and this can be especially useful if you are multi-booting and you want to keep things on separate partitions okay and uh, so we also need to create a configuration file so this configuration file will be um, basically prepared for the uh, systemd boot to know exactly what to do and uh, we have a manual for this actually which will tell you exactly what each of these parts mean so let's uh, just start creating so first let's uh, check something so if i go to the boot directory and i list uh, what is in there we can see that we have the vm linux dash linux and these initramfs files which uh, we basically need for um so these are like the kernel in in a binary that can be understood by that can be run by the efi and the initial ram disk images that need to be loaded for linux to start up and so when we actually install uh, the bootloader by boot ctl install it will you can see it creates directories and it copies the bootloader's uh, efi binary so the binaries that can be run 
by the EFI and contain the bootloader are now copied to the boot partition and we can list and we can see that these new directories are here and so we need to cd into the loader directory and in this di loader directory we can see that we have this loader.conf file and that's what we need to change so you will type in the fav your favorite editor's name uh, I, my favorite editor is vim and i know that uh, some people say that we shouldn't really use vim in tutorial videos because it will scare away the new users but i think if you are watching a deep dive video on arch linux installation then don't be scared of vim but if you don't like vim you can you know just use nano and type in nano loader.com for whatever and but you know this decision you had to make when you installed the basic packages you had to make a decision what kind of text editor you are installing so let's edit this file so the timeout line i will change so i removed the uh, hash symbol from the beginning and i changed it to five seconds because i'm old and slow so i need five seconds to change my boot option if i need to this will basically tell us how long will uh, the system d boot wait for us to select an option and if we don't select an option in five seconds it will just boot into the default one console mode keep is going to be basically when the system boots up the efi system um, sets up our graphical con like well this text console to a certain resolution and console mode keep will just let us keep the original uh, settings it doesn't change it and then we can add editor and no and i press the tab key between them and editor no will mean that the user is not able to change the kernel parameters on boot this is basically a suggestion for the user to keep it no if you are afraid that someone can come in and uh, boot your system without you knowing and changing in the <coughs> changing the kernel parameters and uh, doing some kind of shenanigans on your computer this is not like a very strong security measure but this is kind of the suggestion and then uh, we will also delete this and default in our case will be arch dot conf and this last line this default line is basically telling the bootloader what is the default option that we want to be selected and in my case it's not really working but it won't really matter anyways let's save uh, the file and let's quit the editor let's quit the editor okay and uh, now if uh, you re realize that there is this entries directory there so we want to go into the entries directory because this will contain the entries the bootloader entries and so what do we do there we basically have to create files this dot conf files that will be specifying what are the boot options and we will use like an arch linux this is title linux will tell us what is the uh, binary the kernel binary the efi type uh, kernel binary that can be run and the init ram image which will contain other things will was is going to be given here and we will give options the options will contain the name of the root partition or the uuid of the root partition and that should be mounted in a read write mode so actually if we check out the uh, arch wiki i think here we can see no sorry i need to scroll down here that uh, if you have like a real computer not just a virtual machine and you want to 
have your microcode loaded, the processor microcode, which uh, basically, I have a video about microcodes, so you can watch that if you're interested what it means. And so this is where in the, uh, in this uh, system debut, you can add additionally the microcode image to be loaded, but for that you need to install the microcode package. This is not required on a virtual machine, so that's why I am not doing it uh, at this moment. So let's create this, uh, this file with uh, just typing in our editor's name and arch.conf will be the file name. And let's uh, just simply type in title is going to be Arch Linux. So this is the text that will appear as the menu item and then Linux slash VM Linux dash Linux and then the init are the, well it's maybe it's better idea to separate it with tabulator characters, it'll look a little prettier. Init RAM FS dash Linux dot IMG and then options and this will be root equals and I don't want to type in the UUID by myself so I will save this file save and quit and uh, I will use the blkid command and so my root partition is in dev slash sda2 and I want this UUID to be in my file so what I can do here is I use this double, uh, what is it, double greater than signs. This will append the output of this command into our file, so arch.conf. Make sure that you use the double and not just the single greater than sign. A single greater than sign will overwrite the file. So once we've done this, we can go back to our text editor and what I can do is actually just delete what I don't need. UUID equals is what I need. I don't need that quotation mark and I go here and I can basically say that from this point on I just want to delete everything and then add RW at the end, read write. So now that we defined the uh, root partitions to save the file. And so this is all the information that basically our uh, system D boot program needs to boot the system. And then if we uh, quit this file, we can go back and check out that uh, in the slash boot directory, Actually, we have two of these image files. There is a initramfs-linux and there is an initramfs-linux-fallback image and the fallback image contains a lot more kernel modules while the regular one only contains the one that uh, corresponds to the hardware that these uh, initramfs have been generated on. So if you need to move your operating system from one hardware to another, then it's a good idea to also have a boot option which will load this fallback image instead of the regular image. And for that we need to create another boot option. And so we only have one in this entries directory. If I do a ls command here, you can see that we only have arch.conf. So let's just copy with the cp command copy arch.conf to maybe arch.fb for fallback and let's uh, so we copied the file we can make sure that the file has been created and now let's edit the file with your favorite text editor and uh, what we want is we need to change the name of course to arch linux fallback image and then we want to change Come on. Yeah, I just said I like Vim, but sometimes I screw up. So in RMFS dash Linux dash fallback. So that's what we need. We need to change the title. So it has a different title. 
we don't need to change the Linux line and the options line, we need to change the initrd line instead, which is going to be initrmfs-linux-fallback.img. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can save and quit this file. And basically, we have done everything that we need for systemd boot to boot our system. So we just need to reboot the virtual machine or the computer. And let's see if it works or not. So what I will need to do here is, of course, first exit the root environment and then I will just shut down my virtual machine here, this QMU machine because I don't need it anymore and how so if you are using like a different virtual machine then you need to uh, remove now the image from the um, live environment or if you are using a computer you should unplug your live USB or remove your live DVD if you are using like an optical drive for that. If you are using QMU like I do, so this is uh, the script I run to start QMU with the CD-ROM. So virtual CD-ROM is mounted there and it is booting from this drive. And what basically what I need to do is just remove this line and so my other script that I already prepared for that purpose, it just only loads these two, uh, the virtual hard drives, and uh, it will just boot from those. So I can start my virtual machine with no USB stick or no virtual CD in, and you can see, wow, it works. And uh, well, if you can do some things here, so for some reason, well, I exactly know exactly what the reason is. The reason is that uh, I've already tried this installation and uh, I selected this Arch Linux installation as the default and which uh, have been saved to an EFI variable. So now that even I removed the uh, the, the, the bootloader and reinstalled the bootloader. It seems like the EF5 variable saved it. So if uh, actually what I want to show you here is uh, on the internet and that is in the system the boot we have key bindings so we can use these following keys and we can press the D letter D to select any entry as the default entry and this will be saved in the EFI variables. So it will be only... So if you are like change your computer but move your hard disk into a new computer and you boot that hard disk, well the EFI system will be different so these default settings will be lost there in that case. So this is saved exactly in the EFI of the machine and how it looks is uh, you select the boot entry and you press the letter D and you can see that this kind of arrow has been moved there and it will be where the next time you boot that will be loaded automatically once the timeout is over. So now the system, welcome to Arch Linux and the system is booting up and we are at our login prompt so we can log in actually with root because we only have root user up to this point and well our system have successfully booted so congratulations we have installed Arch Linux and uh, well you can do one more thing here this is the pacman hook for systemd uh, which um, so if you remember when we installed this uh, systemd boot, there was this command like the boot ctl install, which copied a bunch of files from the file system to the boot uh, partition. And well, this has to be done again if there is like an update to systemd. This is not done automatically, so you need to use the boot ctl the uh, boot ctl update command to copy 
the files to the boot partition manually. What you can do instead actually is just create this uh, file which will trigger trigger whenever the systemd package is upgraded and after the upgrade this command will be run and will update uh, systemd boot. This is not like a very important thing, it's not like a crucial thing, It's I think it's a good thing to do, but if I were you, maybe I, you don't want to create this file now and type it in manually, maybe first you want to proceed with installing a graphical environment and just, you know, do a good old copy and paste this into a text file and just use the uh, root privileges to copy that uh, text file into this exact position. And once you've done that, this uh, boot CTL update will run every time that there is a new version of systemd installed. And so this is the end of our video for today. I hope you learned something from it. And so, as I told you in the beginning, this is not the end of the installation deep dive series, because even though now we technically installed Arch Linux and we have a working Arch Linux operating system, this is a far from a usable system and we will be going through step by step how to install the graphical environment, how to set up the users properly, what kind of tips and tricks we can do to make managing our system day by day easier. And so with that I leave you here and subscribe to the channel if you are interested and want to hear more Arch Linux, Linux or just generally um, free software related topics discussed by me and give a like or thumbs up or whatever to this video if you enjoyed and learn something from it. If you have any questions or comments you can leave them down below and we will see each other the next time. Bye bye.